talking wedges today and I've got a very good player here at Torquay that has been chatting with me some time now about wedges. He's been struggling around the greens with the current wedges that he's got. So I thought we'd meet up with him today and just have a little chat with him, see what the problem is and see if we can identify the problem and see if there's anything we might be able to help him with moving forward. Let's, uh, let's go and meet up with Chris. Right, Chris, welcome. How are we today? Very well, thanks, Dan. Okay, so we're going to have a little look at your wedges today, aren't we? Yes, we are. Um, you carry, well, we got you a nice new set of AP2s, got to be 18 months ago now, isn't it? Just before the T100s came out. You yeah, went just before the AP2s. Them. And you've had a mixture of wedges in your bag for some time now, haven't you? Yeah, very long time now, over the years. Handicap at the moment? Three. Three. And what's the area that you struggle with the most? Um, well, in general for me it's driving, but it's mainly around the green, it's just getting that bit of bite for the little chip shots, just a bit of check really. So not, not struggling necessarily with the full shots coming in? No, it's just the little ones around the green where you've got to be a bit soft touch. Yeah. Um, I feel like I have to just play a lot of bump and runs with a, with a 56 degree still. Right, okay. So you've got a couple of, couple of wedges in your hand there now, what have you got there? Tell us the little <coughs> story about these so, wedges. I've got my very, old, very, very old Callaway. Yeah. 58 degree. 58 degree, 10 degrees of bounce. Which must be, gotta be a good 10 years old easily. Okay. Um, if not longer. And how long have you had that in the bag? You've taken it out of the bag, you said. I've not had that in the bag for probably a good eight years. Okay, but you've got some very happy memories with it. Yeah, they, these used to spin like a lot. I had the set. But yeah. I've somehow misplaced the other two. Okay. Um, but they spin like a lot when I first got them. They did, did used to ruin my golf ball, but. They did, did they? Straight through golf yeah, ball? Yeah, but I did okay. get grab and I don't create a lot of spin, so. Okay, so when you're doing your little chip shots, you just want a little bit of, not necessarily the ball to spin on you, but you want it to sort of grab on the green a fraction. Yeah, just like a little bit of check and then it just slowly then releases, releases out. Then releases out towards the cut. Okay, and then what's this club in your hand, so this one here now? Then after many years, I'll just keep changing wedges. I've gone for the Vokey. Okay, and 56. this is 56 degree, again, 10 degrees of bounce, so you've tried to match it up as best you can. And that's an SM5, so that's a SM5, few years yeah. old as well. Um, so, and this is the club you've kind of struggled with and, and looking yeah, at replacing. Yeah, this is the, the main club that I use around the greens. Yeah. Um, like I say, I just have to play bump and runs with it. Right, okay. And the problem you've got though, is if you go back to a 58, which we're gonna have obviously look at your numbers when we get outside, what else have you got in the bag there? So you got a 50, yeah. which I only hit full shots with. So that's matching in with your 56. Yeah. So that's and an SM5. And then I recently got this, 62. So that's an SM7, 62. Now what do you use the 62 I for? I just use it for bunker shots and the odd occasional flop shot. So um, getting out of jail shot. Yeah, so it's, it's very rare really. Um, mainly at the bunker I use it. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go outside and we're only going to just film you outside and then we're going to come back in here and have a little look at the numbers because it's so windy at the moment. But we're going to go and play a few shots outside with these, get some numbers and see if we can just give you maybe some answers that hopefully you've uh, been looking for. Yeah, that'd be great. Cheers, Dan. Right, very breezy. Your uh, lockdown haircut was flapping about <laughs> lovely in that wind there, Chris. It was a bit, wasn't it? <laughs> right, let's look at some of the numbers. So we've actually got a bit of an answer, haven't we, from what we've done outside. So if we start off with your SM5 56 degree. This one here, yeah. Yeah, launching it at 34 degrees. And you look at the spin average, 951 on an average, and sort of getting a little bit of a fluctuation of, of spin numbers. But ultimately, we could see out there, I mean, that was quite obvious to me that when you were hitting it, there was no grab on that, that shot at all. No, it was it's just it? a bump and run. It was just a bump and run, releasing out towards the hole, which in some times, that's not a bad shot to have. No, it works well for me. I'm not, I'm not a, hor a horrendous chipper. Yeah, but, but you do want to try and see if you can find something that has a little bit more grab on it. Then we went into the 58 degree, um, which is the old Callaway. 
and I've got to say, the performance on this was very impressive considering how old it is. Launching at 32, so actually interestingly launching it a little bit lower, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But look at the spin difference, so it's 1700 revs in spin compared to 951. So a real difference there, and again, there's been some big jumping around in spin numbers, but ultimately on an average, you were getting a lot more check. Yeah. out of that one, weren't you? That one feels better, feel, feel more comfortable with that one. So, talking about the launch of that, and we talked about this outside briefly, but did you, what do you think you're kind of doing in order to lower the launch on that particular club, considering it's two degrees I just more feel, lofted? I just feel a bit more confident that it is gonna grab. Okay. I, only, I only got the, out of the bag on Wednesday, out yeah. of the garage, and um, had a little hit for half an hour on the, temp, on the practice area, yeah. and it just felt, I could get grab. Okay. A only a little bit, but a lot more than what I can with the my original ones. Right. So then let's have a little look at then we did some bit more experimenting. So then we put Chris in a new SM8 in the 56 because ultimately we still got to make sure we get the gapping right in your golf bag. Yes. Okay. Because that's really really important that we get that right. So if we look at the 56 degree SM8, we've got 32 degrees in a launch which basically is exactly the same as what you're getting out of that 58. Then you've got 1400 revs of spin. So you're about 400 revs short of where you were getting out of the 58, but it's definitely an improvement of spin from the previous 56. So the older yeah. 56 really, we can see there the jump from SM6 up to SM8, that little bit extra spin that you're getting from a newer wedge, basically. Yes. Which was, again, it was a fraction noticeable on the green, wasn't it? It wasn't massive. Yeah, a little bit. It wasn't, you... wasn't massive. It te seems to grab, but then release a little bit more. That's what I found. Yeah. Then, though, we've gone into an SM8 in the 58. So, again, we're trying to see what these numbers kind of bring in to see if there is an opportunity to, for him to replace the wedge. And we've got 30 degrees of launch, so launching it maybe a fraction lower. So you feel, yeah. again, you've got a little bit more confidence that you may be leaning into the shot a little bit more, taking, delivering a little bit less loft because you're going at it a bit harder, maybe? Yes, possibly, yeah. And then, spin now up at 1,800, nearly 1,900 revs, but certainly a few in the 2000s there with what you were getting out of the, the shot. But we could see from those results that that SM8 and the 58 degree Callaway, you could see that the grab was quite noticeable yeah. from the 56, wasn't it? Yeah, you can see quite a lot of it. It's just probably a little bit more confident with it. Feel like you can fire in a bit more. Okay. So the big thing that we've got to decide on now is how does your bag now look moving forward? Because let's be honest, you can't go 50, 58, 62, or can you? Well, I probably could for a little while, but yeah, I'd have to change. Um, something in something. there. Yeah, probably the 62 would have to go, because okay. like I say, the 58 Callaway is, seems to be working in a minute, so there's no, no harm in uh, keeping that in the bag for a little while. Well, I, I agree with, with uh, Chris in this situation. What would be the point in Chris paying X amount of money to replace that 58 degree Callaway that he's pulled out of his loft? What's the point in spending the extra money for what? A hundred reps? Yeah, for, for, yeah, for the... And it really wasn't good. noticeable massively different no. on the actual golf course out there on the short game area. So there's no point in Chris spending that extra money. The only concern that I have, and this is something that Chris is going to have to go out and test, is that gap between his 50 degree wedge moving up to 58 and then possibly keeping his 62. Would you keep your 62 or would you take it out? No, I'd take it out and I'd probably actually keep my 56. I'll go 50, 56, 58 right. for, for the minute, which would be a bit, I say a bit clustered gap in, but okay. um, only because I find my 56 goes about 80 yards yeah. and around this golf course, I'm quite often 100 okay. yards out or a bit closer. So I'd probably use my 56 more for full shots. Yeah than I ever would my 62. Right. So this is then a situation where Chris would probably start to look at maybe putting the gap in there at about 54 degrees, but again, he's gonna to have to go out and have a little experiment on the golf course to see what kind of works for you in yeah. your golf bag. Yeah. So there you go, there's a little insight into Chris's golf bag. Obviously a three handicap golfer, very good golfer, been struggling with his chipping for a little while. I wanted to sort of get down to the numbers on, on it for him today. It wasn't about me selling him a golf club, 
was about him trying to find the answers really to what is going to hopefully help his game moving forward. Put your comments down below. Really important to make sure that you have wedges in your bag that are going to do jobs. For Chris, it was really important for him to do a specific job with that 58 or 56, whichever one he uses moving forward. But that particular shot, he just wanted to get a wedge in his bag that was going to help him with his game. Let me know. Put your comments down below. Have you been through something similar to that with your pro? I'd like to hear what you have to say. As always, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. And we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Take care.